from you guys. Got it. Okay. So we've got Kirsten in the studio. She's going to be talking all about home decor chalk, which is one of our favorite, favorite paints. I know yes. I always say that, but we really do love it. Um, it is truly easy, one step, no prep, great for furniture, great for home decor. Um, so if you guys have any questions or comments in the chat, I'll answer them for you. Um, and we can just get started again. Um, it is an amazing product available at Michael's. And again, yep. let us know if you guys have any questions. Perfect. Thanks, Kira. So exactly what Kira said, this is truly one of the greatest paints ever available for everything that Kira said. It's all purpose. It is good for furniture. I'm going to show you guys doing it on an old um, brass candlestick. It's perfect for glass. It turns anything that's old and ugly into something new and fresh and wonderful. So again, chalk paint, folk art, home decor chalk paint. The palette at Michael's is beautiful, you guys. It's everything from like a really rich red, a really bright periwinkle, which Kira's going to say it, color of the year, right? periwinkle or a yeah. color similar to that but yeah. all the basics for home decor whites and creams and blacks beautiful blues so you guys today's class with michaels is a little bit different i'm not doing a project from start to finish i'm just really focusing on all the amazing techniques everything that you can do little tips on how to use the paint how to get a heavier distress a lighter distress so today is all about all the ins and outs of using this paint in a million different ways. So anyone that is new to chalk paint, which I always am so fascinated that there's people out there that haven't tried it because we've been using it for so long and it's such, such an amazing paint. What chalk paint is known for is exactly what Kara said. You don't have to prep at all. If your furniture is varnished or it's chipped or it's base coated six times, or it's a cherry wood or a a satin or a gloss, whatever it is, you paint right over it. You don't have to strip it or sand it or prime it. So that is the most exciting thing. And then the second most exciting thing is the way that it sands. It sands to a light, um, really soft powder quickly, really, really quickly, revealing either different layers of color underneath or the raw wood and just gives you that beautiful distressed finish. If you guys can see this frame, whoop, might go a little bit higher. It was an old gold, it's actually plastic, a gold plastic frame. We painted it with an ivory chalk paint. We let that dry. Then we painted it with that beautiful green and we let that dry and then we sanded it. And again, the secret to the chalk paint is the way it sands, it reveals layers and layers of color. So those are just the, the most amazing things and the reasons why this paint works fabulous on anything. Okay, so the palette that I'm using is just unique to Michael's. It's colors that I like, but really, excuse me, again, guys, it's all about technique. A brush that I'm gonna be using today is this home decor, folk art home decor chalk paint brush. And this is the perfect brush for the colors, um, for furniture, for frames, for candlesticks. And it's also a great brush for the wax, which we're gonna to get to again at the end. So those are the two products that I'm focusing on. And then the rest is just stuff, whether it be frames or furniture or candlesticks, some is from the Goodwill, some is just stuff that we've had laying around the studio. So old furniture, chalk paint and a brush, that's all we need for today. All right, so the first thing I wanted to do is just show you guys the really, really basics. And the basic is, how beautifully it base coats. So you guys can tell, I'm not sure if we're straight ahead. This is an old junky drawer of a really cute dresser, good, good structure, good solid wood, but a color that I no longer want. So all I did was remove the knob. I didn't prime it. Are we up there? Here, I don't even know. Yeah, we are overhead. Okay. We can see it. We can see that. No, nope, I just didn't want it. marks. <laughs> um, I know. It is old and dirty. We found it at the Goodwill, but you guys can see it's got a pretty heavy varnish on it. It's cherry wood. Um, it's kind of got some dings in it, but still really good structure. So all you have to do with the folk art chalk paint, this drawer is bigger than I intended. 
um, all you have to do is make sure it's clean, that there's maybe nothing sticky, there's no food or gum or tape or stickers, um, but that is the only prep that you have to do. And then what I'm gonna do is just show you guys how beautiful the paint is, how rich and creamy the formula is, and how easy it is to base coat. So all of the chalk paint comes in an eight ounce bottle, which again, I love. And this eight ounce bottle, everyone makes fun of me here in the studio for several reasons, but this particular reason is I did, this is the truth. I did six, six chairs, two armchairs, a table and a big hutch with, and I swear it almost sounds foolish when I say it, with one bottle of the Home Decor Chalk Paint Castle, all of those pieces. So what looks like a little bottle, you guys, this goes, goes forever and it will do some really big furniture. So always shake it a little bit. You don't have to shake it too much. And then let's see, I wanna move it so you guys can see with this giant drawer. I like to use the paint right out of the bottle. I love that large mouth so you can just put your brush right in there and not have any waste by pouring it onto a palette. But you guys can see how rich and creamy that paint is. So all I'm doing is creating a base coat. And you guys can see on that dark wood, how beautiful that lighter pastel green covers. Some of the, most of the colors are one coat, sometimes two depending on what kind of distress finish you want at the very end. But you can see the coverage that you get is just amazing. Any other paint, you'd be priming it, you'd be sanding it, you'd be doing two or three coats. And this is just one coat and just really great coverage. I feel like my drawer is touching the camera. When no, I do you're the good. Camera, it looks good. It's nice to see it so close that it's like truly. That's like close, you could, right? I would do a coat, let it dry, and then do one more coat. Yeah. And you know what? A lot of times we do do that. And it's not the second coat. And Kira, you probably will say the second coat is really not even a full coat. You're just kind of going in there and refreshing some of the brush stroke areas. But right. you guys, I just wanted you to see the coverage that you get with one coat, with that brush, and you can see how smooth and it just flattens out. Okay, so the first step is base coating your surface and letting it dry completely. The chalk, the, the chalk paint is an ultra matte finish and it's an acrylic base, so it dries really fast, which makes doing your project um, fun because you're not waiting days for prep and prime and letting it dry. So then, Again, what I mentioned about the sanding, that is the reason why it is such a fabulous paint. So I have the second drawer in the same dresser and you can see it's that green, totally dried. And all I'm using is medium grit sandpaper. And this is gonna be close up, but it's gonna be good because you guys are gonna see it. I'm choosing to let the natural wood color that was on the original piece of furniture show through. So by sanding this, and you can see how quickly, let's see, can you see that? How quickly it removes with a soft powder. I wanna make sure you guys can see that. I'm gonna do this corner right here. How quickly that sands, you can see that really fine powder. It's revealing just along the edges. See that beautiful color of the wood that the original furniture was. I'm gonna do a little bit up here on the molding. But depending on how much you sand, brush that off. I really want you guys to see, whoop, I'm moving this giant drawer around. I really want you guys to see, like I barely sanded it, maybe just 10 seconds and it removes the paint, but it doesn't create any kind of damage. It doesn't make the paint peel. It just is a really soft powder that allows you to get that beautiful distressed look. That is the magic of the Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint is the way it distresses. If you use any other, let me stay on that without talking. Oh, there was perfect. And Kirsten, we have a couple questions. 
Okay. Okay. So someone's asking about dry time. So um, okay. in between coats. And then what kind, I know you're going to get to wax um, yep. to talk. And someone just said, do you need to put a top coat because it'll chip? Okay. So if you want to, oh, if you want to handle question. or throw them over to yep. me, just let me yep. know. I can do it. Or we'll both chime yep. in together. Um, yep. All great questions. So dry time. Everything varies, obviously, if your house is really warm or really cold, or maybe it's a day that there's a lot of humidity, um, all of that matters, but this is ultra matte acrylic, so really it dries an hour max. You do want to do, if you're doing two coats, you want to leave about an hour to two hours in between, just to make sure any nooks and crannies that paint might have built up are totally dry, but it dries really, really fast, you guys, and once it's dried to the touch, like really make sure if it's, um, if it's a frame like this or something that's got a lot of nooks and crannies and details, just make sure all of those little cracks that have paint are dry. But again, if it's dry to the touch, you can start distressing it. Um, so that was one, what was the other great question? There were three. One was, do you have to seal um, it? Do you have to seal it? Will it chip? And I know you're gonna talk about wax. So if you wanna yep. just address that. So, it will not chip. You guys, again, I've painted a million things. Um, no, it won't chip. And you don't have to prime it. You don't have to sand it before. You don't have to prep your surface. And the magic of the paint is it really is on your piece of furniture forever. It is so durable. It is such a great finish. But there is a product, and we're going to get to this because there's lots of fun tips and techniques about this. This is the clear home decor folk art wax. So this is what would work as your sealer or your top coat. And I'm going to show you guys at the end. And this is something that if it's decorative, if it's candlesticks, or if it's a frame, you do not have to use the wax. The wax does give you a really soft satin finish and kind of allows the finish, um, to be less matte and more durable. So furniture, I would say, use it no matter what. But if you're doing a decorative jar, um, a decorative candlestick, you just decide if you like the matte finish or a little bit more of a, of a soft satin finish. But that would be your top coat. You don't varnish yeah, so, it with anything else. Yeah, so Kirsten, a lot of people are asking about bathroom cabinets and just cabinets in general. And I know for a fact, your kitchen is chalk painted. I know Dylan's <laughs> kitchen is chalk painted. Yes. I'm gonna, um, it, it sounds crazy, like my entire house, I did not paint the exterior with chalk paint, but my <laughs> bathroom, I know, right? But my bathroom has been chalk paint for probably, I don't know, probably nine, 10 years. Um, and it was a cherry, a dark cherry wood, same finish kind of as this drawer, a little bit shiny. Um, it's now gray and distressed with a little bit of white. You guys, it is it's it's perfect. Again, the paint is exactly what we're saying that it is. It is durable. I can wipe it down. If some toothpaste gets on there, I just wipe it right off. It really is everything that we say it is. It is a fabulous product. So yes, all of your cabinets, you don't have to sand them or prime them, paint them, wax them, and they will be perfect for, for a long, long time. Yeah. So here's another question. If you want to change the color down the road, can you paint over chalk paint? Yes, you can paint because the, the key to the paint, to the chalk paint is whether it's unfinished wood, whether it's a dresser that you found that you love the shape and it was white, then blue, then black, then green with some crayon from a kid, that dresser can be refurbished and made beautiful with chalk paint. So yeah, you would just paint right over it. Yep, absolutely. Um, let's see, what if the previous paint is oil-based? I feel like I'm on a game show. <laughs> I know you get lots of points. You're winning until I lose. Um, <laughs> if it's oil based, so like a lacquer paint that maybe would be something that your builder would use, you can also paint over that and you don't have to strip that or prime that. You just don't want anything. Um, you don't want anything that's oily or greasy or which I can't think of a paint that would create that finish on mm -hmm. a piece of furniture. So it, it really paints over almost anything. And we have painted over some gnarly things here in the studio, oh, like repainted yeah. and yep. Um, yep. things we found at thrift stores. So yep. it really does work. It, it and really Christian made does a good work. point. It is not outdoor. It is for indoor only. So um, yep. that is important. But you can really, I mean, I have a 
trunk in my house I've done. Like it's so easy to do. It's so easy. It is, it's the greatest paint. Um, so um, did I win the game show? All the good questions? Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. And okay. if it's something, um, cause you can stencil with this paint also. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. So if you stenciled and then you wanted to change that, I would just do a light sand to get that raised stencil off, but yep. then you could totally paint and stencil back over it again. Yep. yep, absolutely. And the neat thing when you stencil with it, if it's a really neat ornate pattern, you would do the same sanding technique which would kind of distress all of those element design elements of the stencil and give you a really nice vintage look. So everything you do with a solid base coat, you could do also with stripes or stencils or you know any pattern that yeah. you create using the home decor chalk paint. So yeah. all great ideas. And okay. also, you know, somebody made the comment about don't cheap out on paint, um, someone's cute comment, but it's true, like there's a lot of this um, type of chalk paint um, in the market and like at boutiques and things like that. And this is such an affordable solution and the quality is, if not the same, better. It is, again, it has been out. So I've been at Plaid for eight years and this kind of came out when I started. So it is, it is a part of the line now. It is a consistent... Yes. Um, quality paint. If you are looking, you know, you do want to yes. have quality, something that you're making a big commitment, right. putting it in your home. So, yes. Um, I and agree. Jane, and I don't know what thermofoil is. I don't either. I, don't I know. lost the game show. <laughs> but, we just lost. Um, we could Google it for you, or we um, always put it in our chat. Um, if you want a direct message, our team on social, yeah. they can always get you some answers from our customer service department. Perfect. Okay, so you guys, what great questions. So now I'm gonna go back just to all the basic techniques. And the main technique is no priming, base coat, let it dry. And then the simplest way to use it is to sand it. And I just wanna make sure anyone joining us kind of late saw that this was an old dark wood drawer, painted it, let it dry. And then I just want to show you one more time on this little section, how it sands. See how it sands so quickly, a fine powder comes off, but you can, depending on how much you sand, you can create a really beautiful distressed finish. So that is the basic 101s of the folk art chalk paint is sanding it now and you guys can see on there it's just a soft powder that comes right off okay so now I want to show you guys a little tip for distressing so these frames are both done with this beautiful nautical it's a really dark really pretty navy blue also available at Michael's and I have got, and I always have at my desk, little scrap pieces of wood. Size doesn't matter, type of wood does not matter. You just wanna make sure it's got a really smooth side. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just a really smooth side. So these are little wooden blocks that allow us to distress kind of a different way with the chalk paint. So both of these were just little plastic, uh, frames that we found at the Goodwill. I base coated them with the nautical. Now one of them, look, I'm struggling to know which one. One of them, this one, I actually base coated. I want you guys to see the two color technique. I base coated this with a folk art chalk paint light blue. It's this color. So first I painted it light blue, that color right there, let it dry completely. And then I did my second coat with that folk art home decor nautical. And I want to show you when you sand that. I wonder if I should hold that one up as well. You guys see, this is the magic. See, it didn't sand to the white frame. It's sanded to the light blue undercoat. So that is what is so amazing. If you did this with any other paint and then you sanded it, it would tear it down to the original surface. I wanna make sure you guys can see. See that light blue? That color right there, I'm gonna leave that there. That is what the first coat of this little frame was. 
Yep. Someone was asking if you can do light to dark or dark to light. So absolutely, no. and the coverage is so good. This is one of those paints. You can truly put light blue over dark blue or white over blue. Yep. You can go like both here, ways, which is great. Here's a great way to see it. Light blue first, dark blue sanded through. Light blue first, opposite. <laughs> light blue with the dark blue sanded <laughs> through. And then the dark blue with the light sanding through. So two colors. Two, the two colors exactly the same, but the different look that you get. Absolutely. But that is layering two colors. And you guys have fun with it. A lot of people layer three and four colors. Just the key to that is just making sure that each color is dry in between coats. And then you'll just get all these different effects depending on how much you sand it. Someone is so asking that, what uh, grit sandpaper would you recommend? I always use just medium grit. So let's see what this is. Medium grit, this is 120. Okay. I wouldn't use anything super heavy and I wouldn't use anything super light, but because it sands so easy, the control that you have is just amazing. So this is sanding two colors or sanding down to whatever is underneath. So now I want to teach you guys this little wooden block. This is such a fun technique that we love to do here. Okay, so I'm going to actually do it with white. I wanted to make sure that you guys could really see it. Actually, I'll do it with this beautiful gray. So whatever color you choose, and this is a great technique, you guys, if you want a heavier um, almost chippy um, farmhouse, barn wood look. You want your distress to be a little bit heavier. It's also a great way to distress super, super fast. Okay, so my first color, my nautical is dry and I'm gonna use this smaller block just because my frame is smaller. But the reason why I always have different sizes is depending on the size of your project, but all of them would work. Actually, I'll use this medium one so you guys can see it. That paint on there is dry. It's just something I use over and over. So you want to put a little bit of paint, and this is the paint that you want to distress a little bit on a palette or a paper plate. Make sure you guys can see that. So the key to the block is you pounce into the paint. I'm only going to do the side of the block because my surface is little, but again, depending if it's the top of a dresser or a big table, you could dip more of the block into the paint. But I'm going to dip half of that wood block into the paint and then kind of pounce. Can you guys see that? Kind of pounce on the side. You want a lot of paint on there, but not too much. The only thing you need to remember with the block is you want to work in the direction of whatever your surface is and you want to follow the natural lines of your surface so you don't want to go back and forth you don't want to go in a circle um, you don't want to be really random you want to follow the lines of the frame and just be you know really um really aware of the lines of your project if it's a candlestick you wouldn't go up and down you would go around. If it was a table, you would go almost the natural way that the wood grain would fall. So into the paint, pounce off a little bit, go in the direction or in the, in the natural curve of your project. And then you wanna be really light-handed, almost like you're letting it skip across your surface. And you wanna be flat with your project, not at an angle, but flat with your surface. So you just start and you just let that skim Pick up paint as you need it. Let me hold that up. I want you guys to be able to see it. I hope I can be still. So I'm gonna do the top part of this frame. Light to the touch and just let that almost jump across your project. Can you guys see that? It I'm almost gives like a really paint. like chippy look but you're adding yes. paint so it looks fake distress. Yes, but it's such a beautiful natural farmhouse look. I'm gonna do this element of the frame. I'm just going to let that jump across. And you guys can see, this is something that I would never be allowed or never be allowed. I would never be able to do with a brush because it's just random. It's where the weather would distress a piece of furniture. And that is because you're really light handed. You're not mashing down and you're almost letting that block just drag across your surface. The only tips is following the natural lines or shape of your project. So these have straight lines. You're always going in a straight line. 
You can really see it right there. If I'm still enough. See how yeah, it's just it a beautiful. totally different look, but you're just letting that skim across your surface and picking up paint, not too much, but see the difference. I know the colors are different. We had light blue and we had gray, but let's see if you guys, ooh, if I can be still enough, see the difference. They're both such beautiful finishes and distressed, but still totally different. So just some tips with you when using the home decor chalk paint. Okay, so that's one of the great techniques is using the little wooden block. And the wooden block, you guys, all I do when I'm done is just clean it on a paper towel and I reuse it over and over and over again. It's such a great tool. Let me show you guys. This is just pieces of molding, but it could represent really ornate furniture. It could represent a big frame that you're redoing. So solid black base coat, solid gray base coat. Again, a piece of molding, but it could represent a dresser front, um, a headboard, and then a, another little corner. So this one, I already base coated with a brown and I distressed that with sandpaper. So it's revealing that color underneath. I'm gonna show you using the same block on this really textured ornate surface. I'm gonna go in the direction of the project, but I'm just gonna let that skim across really random. If you mash too hard, what you're actually doing is putting it on and taking it off at the same time. That's why I say be really light with your touch because the block just kind of falls in different areas. And just like the sandpaper, the more you sand it, the more distressed it is. The more you use this block, the more distressed it is. But again, you get that beautiful chippy paint weathered, sat outside for 300 years look. <laughs> and it's just such a unique, such a unique look. I'm gonna do the same thing on a little bit more simple molding, just to show you guys following the edges and adding just a layer of color. And one thing that we do here in the studio that we really, really have loved is maybe we'll do two colors and sand it. And then just to get a little pop of a bright color, we'll add a third color and we'll do that with the block. So the key to this folk art home decor chalk paint is just layering and layering and layering. And you just get such a unique finish. Any questions about the block? Normally we get tons. Yeah, someone asked if it's just what you have on hand. And like you said, it could just be a scrap piece of paper. Um, super wood. simple. Wood, sorry, thank you. <laughs> scrap piece of wood. I was looking at your paper towel. Um, okay, a scrap piece of it. wood. And again, that yep. I don't like sanding. I just don't like the texture and the feeling, yeah. you know. Um, so I love using the wood block. And I will say though, this sands to a powder finish. So it's not gonna gum up your sandpaper or make a mess yep. either. And it's non-toxic, yep. which is also great. So again, you know, a lot of times if you are painting cabinets or decor, you need to worry about it being toxic and the fumes. And this is non-toxic um, yep. made right here in the USA, which we love um, to promote yep, that also. So that's like an advantage also just to having in your house that it's something that can be safe for your family. Oh, I love that. And then you can craft inside. You don't have to go outside and worry about the fumes. That's right. a great point. Definitely. Yep. So you guys, this is just, I want to show you, I've focused on wood and molding and furniture, but this is just a cute little jelly jar again, that we found at the Goodwill for like a quarter. I've already distressed it a little, but I want to show you guys to just sand that. No effort at all. You can see that really fine powder but just barely sanding it you guys can see that yeah, can you hold just, that up kirsten yep i sure can Woo see how so i love that on gets, glass i know it's so beautiful whether you make a vase out of this or a pencil holder for your desk it yeah. just really just creates a beautiful look and you could layer on glass also so you could do we a second coat. 
Yeah. Yep. Because a lot of you guys that have painted on, on glass, you know that sometimes the paint peels off. And if you add sandpaper to glass being a slick surface, you know, it's going to peel off. It's so amazing to me that it sticks on there and the sandpaper only removes it where you want it to. So it really is amazing. So yeah. that's super fun. Um, let's see what else I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to show you guys this frame and really just because I wanted to show you guys one more time, the difference in using the block, using the sandpaper. So this frame just base coated, you can see it was like, I don't know, maybe a walnut, just a, a really pretty soft wood color with a darker stain. Base coated it with this beautiful blue. This is a color that I love. This is vintage teal. This has become such a popular color that I see everywhere in home decor. Let that dry. And then using the sandpaper, like that was, I almost barely sanded that. That was the easiest way to reveal that original wood color and just give Oh, I'm never still enough. No, nope, you're just good. Give some detail to this beautiful frame. I mean, and there's... again, Michaels has so many great frames. You don't have to use something thrifted or you have, like just buy a frame that they already have. If it's not the color you want, or you want to add some distressing or a pop of color, it's great for gift oh, giving. Absolutely. I just ordered all my pictures from Christmas that we took for my family. Like this is just a great gift, you know, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, again, just a way to anything. Spruce up some frames and inexpensive gift to make even. Great idea. So that's using the sandpaper. And then I'm just gonna show you guys one more time the block technique. All I'm doing is staying in the direction of the surface, letting it just fall on certain areas, really light to the touch. And this is that beautiful gray but I want you guys just to see the different effects that you can get. Once that's dry, you can sand it a little bit if it's too much of the gray, but there's so many ways that you can just go back and really create a personalized look on all of your different surfaces. Okay, now I wanna show you guys the wax. The wax is a fabulous product. Let me get, okay, I'm gonna use this green frame that I showed you guys in the beginning. It was two colors, it was sanded, and now it's completely dry. Wiped off any of the, of the powder from sanding. So the wax, the wax is a varnish, a sealer, and it also creates a really soft, it's, it's between satin and matte. So almost an eggshell, um, an eggshell finish, but it doesn't give it a shine at all. So you still get that beautiful distressed vintage look. So the clear wax, same eight ounce bottle, and you can see it's a really nice consistency. So there's two, there's three, there's a lot of different ways to use the wax. The wax says clear, but because it's, it's a sealer, it's got a lot in there. So it's thicker, it's thicker if you use it right out of the bottle. So I try to give a few different techniques. Um, if you use it right out of the bottle, let me show you guys. This is that same chalk paint brush, which works great with the chalk paint, but it also works great with the wax. Never any water on your brush. You want a perfectly dry brush. So I'm gonna show you guys the difference in using the wax right out of the bottle. And you guys, you need very, very, very little. Like the least amount that you would put on a brush is what you need. You wanna dip it in there, but you wanna remove almost all of the wax from your brush, almost as if you were stenciling. So with very, very little wax, you want to almost buff that into your surface or into your project. You can see it's thick enough to move around and keep moving almost like a polish, but you wanna keep moving that around. If you use it right out of the bottle, it softens your color just a little bit. There's two things, can you guys see that Kira? I want you guys to see. 
even yep. though it says clear wax because the consistency is so perfect to protect your furniture it lightens your paint just a little bit so if you do not want to change or lighten the color this is really important if you're using a darker color you can do one of two things you can apply the wax let that dry i'm cheating here pretend like i've let that dry and then you will buff it which will not only polish it and create a really soft satin finish, but it will also take off some of that color. So that's one way to use the wax. So use it, basically remember it this way. If you use it right out of the bottle, it is gonna add another element of distressing, another element of color. Does that make sense? To yep. your paint. If you do not want to change what you have done, the layers, the rich color of that green, maybe your project is black and you want it to stay black. If you do not want to change that at all, what I recommend is using that same brush, but using a lot of water. So what you're going to do is you are going to wet that same brush. Let me... And I have a couple questions when you're at a part that you can pause. Okay, let me just show them. You're gonna yeah. wet your brush. You're gonna dip it in that wax and it's almost two parts water to one part wax. So it's very thin. And then you're gonna do the same technique. You are gonna polish that on, have a dry paper towel because you don't wanna create puddles but you're gonna see that it buffs a little bit faster. It's much thinner. The color is less, um, less thick. Intense. So it's intense, yep. but you can see that it is still covering beautifully. And when that dries, it will dry exactly to the paint color that your original project was. So the difference is use adding water or not adding water. If you don't add water, you are gonna get just another element, which is beautiful and gorgeous. You're gonna get another element of color. But if you add the water to the wax, you're gonna, be, you're gonna have that rich color that is best if you want a really, if your paint color of choice was really dark. And then again, you're gonna let that dry and then you're gonna buff it with a soft cotton cloth. And that will not only polish it, it will shine it up a little bit. It'll create a little bit of a soft satin finish. And I'm cheating guys, I'm not doing it while it's dry, but you, you definitely want your wax to dry overnight before you buff it. Okay, ask your question. I don't want to okay. forget. Ready, ready? Okay, let's see. Ready, ready. Uh, what kind of cloth, you may have mentioned, but um, what kind of cloth, like a lint-free? Yep, lint-free, or what works great here is we just cut up old white t-shirts. So yep. just a really soft cotton cloth. You just want to make sure it's not a color um, and it doesn't have any texture. So a lint-free cloth. Um, I don't know. T-shirts are the best. T-shirts are the best. Um, but any of those painter's cloths that Andy uses that are lint-free, anything yep. that's just not colored and doesn't have um, a texture. Yep. Okay. Um, can you mix your paint color with the wax? Great. Um, Here, the game show. Um, yes, you can. So the wax, you can add, you can almost create like an antique. And I have, let's see what I've got back here. Da, 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 nothing. Um, I thought I had something. I don't. Yes, you can. You can create almost like a stain. So if you mix equal parts wax with black, you'll get almost like a black stain. And rule of thumb is the more paint you use, the darker, richer your wax color will be. So if you want just a really soft stain, you could mix the brown folk art chalk paint with the wax, but it would be more wax and less paint. So maybe two to one to get a wash or a way to distress it with even more, let me see. Oh, Emily, I've got, we got so many helpers in the, in the studio. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we did. It's the same colors as this frame right here, a light green and a dark green, but you can see we mix, let's see if I can be still. 
we mixed the dark green, which is the base coat of this frame with the clear wax. And we just rubbed and polished that. Can you guys see that if I'm still enough? Yep. And then how it? long? Oh, I saw yeah, a no. yep, We can see it. Yep. So that's another way to use the folk art home decor chalk paint, using the wax with paint to create almost a wash or a stain, um, using the block and using sandpaper. So there's you can even use it on raw wood if you wanted to, if you just wanted to use the wax on like a raw wood or the white on like a gray wood yep. to create like almost like a barn wood effect. You could absolutely would be beautiful. do that. Yep. yep, that would be gorgeous. And it would seal it just enough to make it super durable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So um, those are the techniques. What else? You got more questions? One more question. Um, I feel like the game show. Asking if, sorry, I had to think. Um, asking if you, how long in between your paint before you apply your wax? So look, I'm going to cheat and read the bottle. I always wait overnight, at least, depending again on your weather, um, your humidity. Uh, da, 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 remove excess. So about 24 hours. You just want your chalk paint to be really, really dry to the touch. And then the only thing they say about the wax, and this is just to make sure your project is perfect forever, is once you've waxed it, even though it's dried and you've buffed it, you want to wait until you really give that furniture a lot of wear and tear, Put, putting glasses on it, decorating the top of a table or a dresser that you did. You want to wait about a week just so wherever you are, whatever the temperature in your home is or the climate, you want that wax to be really, really cured so that your furniture piece will be in perfect condition forever. So that's really the only tips with using the wax as a sealer. Yep. So another question, can you use it on metal? You can use it on metal. You can use it on metal. I did just have, I have so many samples. Oh, this is so cute. So this is an old metal um, candlestick that we had. And it was like a really ugly, dirty, almost tarnished um, gold. And we painted it two colors and then sanded it with the chalk paint. And that is just so beautiful. It's almost like a patina, yep. a beautiful finish. So yeah, glass, metal, wood, um, ceramic, it works, it's multi-purpose, it works on anything. So it is a fabulous paint. And you have all these unique ways to create a distressed look. Yep. And some people have questions about raw wood. So you can paint directly okay. on raw wood. It's not yep. gonna soak up, someone had a question about it soaking up um, like a normal paint would, but it's not gonna soak up. It really is a different like animal when you go to paint. So it works on raw wood. You don't need to seal the raw wood first. Nope. Um, you just want to make nope. sure it's clean and dry. Yep. Um, you don't need to about, worry about it cracking your wood. I'm just looking through some nope. pla plastic. People are asking, for, I would use it on hard plastic only for decorative purposes. I wouldn't put it Agreed. on anything like soft or um, moldable or like a silicone, but like right. a hard plastic, it would be okay. Yep. Perfect. Keep gold jewelry. So sure. It works on metal. We've never done jewelry, but that is a great idea. You could do some pretty good. like um, patina or something would be like beautiful. that. With it. And then like I would just feel look. it. Yeah. Yep. That would be gorgeous. Yeah. So whoever asked, like, this is just a piece of raw wood molding that we had laying around the studio. And you guys can see how beautiful the coverage is. Just like Kira said, it doesn't soak in and create... Mm -hmm a stain it just covers in one coat it's just such a beautiful I know you may need two coats but one coat is like, it's like almost just touching up spots like you miss like you Correct. look and you're like oh I missed a spot I didn't see or my lighting's usually yep. bad but it really is great coverage um and it's self-level like so you don't get brush marks yep. um and someone's asking how you clean the brush just soap and water warm soap and water it's non-toxic cleans up with soap and water um, yep. you know, you don't need to wear gloves. Nope. It's the perfect paint for all of your home decor projects. Comes off your hands. Trust me. Yep. Cause I always have it on me. Yep. <laughs> it's wonderful. So yeah, that's on the raw wood. You can see how beautiful. And then this we sanded and that raw wood, which is such a big trend right now, that raw wood came through and that's just such a beautiful look. Okay, so those are our tips and techniques using the block, using the sandpaper, layering colors, 
using the wax, adding a little bit of water to the wax. There's so much that you guys can do with this paint. Any other questions, Kira? Would you use wax on fabric? Would that I, is something we have never done. We have never done. So, um, and I guess it would depend on fab, what kind of fabric. We have definitely painted um, like a really pretty ornate wooden chair and maybe the part of the arm, it's like a vintage antique. We just painted it recently. Was kind of almost like arm pads, you know, where it's fabric just on the arms. We actually did paint that fabric because we wanted a solid color chair. Um, but I don't know if I would paint, like I wouldn't do a t-shirt with this or I wouldn't no. do, hmm. yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Or wax, um, wax might get weird on the fabric. Cause think about after we buff the wax, it on the, right. I would not recommend, like if, we have so many other multi-surface paints that you can yep. use with fabric. I think for like great. a decorative purpose, like if you were doing a banner or something or a lampshade, yeah. it works really great on lampshade. On a lampshade, for sure. It is yep. great. Um, and then somebody had one more question um, about, let me see here. I love the questions. Oh, food. It is not food safe. So you right. just, we recommend putting a barrier um, between. So if you did a charger or a serving, use like a yep. glass or a piece of like parchment yeah. paper. Um, it's not, it's not toxic, but it's also not food safe. There's a whole nother level Correct. to that. Yep. Good, yeah. good answer. Yeah. So you all guys, right. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for coming. See you. Yeah, next we'll time. see you guys later this week. I'll be. Um, we've got a class on Thursday night. Um, we've got yep. a awesome painting, so sign up for that. And we've got another Donna Dewberry class tomorrow. So, you guys, thank you so much for joining. This was a great class. Lots of great questions. Thank you guys. Happy New Year, guys. Bye. Bye.